I'm a flit 120. Okay, I want to talk a little bit about the pattern that we're fishing today. Uh, what we're looking for is we're looking for flats or points off of either the islands or the regular shoreline that come out into the lake. That's going to be the first places where these fish kind of pull up on and feed. And uh, this lake has a lot of underwater points and flats that come way, way out to 10 or 11 foot, way out offshore. And those fish are going to, they're going to prefer certain areas where the deep water comes up to those flats or points. Okay, so we're going to go along and look for these areas. And this is a classic example. We're sitting in, we were sitting in 30 feet of water. We're coming up on this, one of these points. It's actually an underwater point. And as you can see on this side imaging, you can see the different change in the contour. And right about in here is where we're going to throw the jerk bait. And you can see there's some bigger rocks. We're in nine feet right now. Back there is 30. Right where these larger rocks are, kind of where the deep water comes up to the tip or the side of that point, more of to the side than to the tip is where those fish are going to be. And you can see there's some on the other side there. And that's basically what we're looking for. These fish will kind of, they'll find the biggest rock in the area if it's in the right depth and they'll relate to it. And right now these fish are anywhere from six to eight to nine foot of water. There he is. And right when I started to drop into that deeper water, that's right where he was. It's a nice one. These fish will relate to what I call, I call them kind of L's, like a, the side of the point, but kind of where it connects to the rest of the shoreline. It's kind of like an underwater L in a contour. And if you can find that in that six to nine foot range, this is what they're preferring right now. And there's rocks there, that's exactly where those fish are gonna be. And we're running that pattern. And every spot that I fish, if it has all those key components, I'm catching fish on them. There he is, finally. Oh, it's a good one, too. You can definitely tell that these fish were pressured because they were responding to, a, to this jerkbait a little bit different than some of the other spots. That's what's really nice about these Ima flits is that they work in very high pressure situations. <laughs> and that's a nice, nice fish. We fish a lot of small, high pressured lakes up where I live in Connecticut and New York. And you need to have a bait to catch fish in those high pressure situations. And that flit does it for me every time. That's a nice, probably a three and a quarter, three, three and a quarter. Beautiful smallie. I mean, look at the size of that fish, the belly on it. I mean, this thing is just loaded. There's one. Oh, 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 oh. He's got a mouthful. Oh, that's a nice one. <laughs> oh, what a beautiful fish. That's a True bronze back right there. What an awesome deal. And that fish was sitting off a boulder. I used my side imaging. There's a little flat here with a couple boulders on it. And if you make a cast on those boulders, those fish, these fish will relate to those bigger rock, especially this time of year. It's just a good ambush point for them. Okay, I want to take a second and talk about the setup that I use when I'm fishing these Flit 120s. I use a Dobbins Champion 704 CB. It's a seven foot four power. 
And this rod is uh, the ultimate jerk bait rod. You know, it has a, enough tip to drive the bait in the cast, and, and when you're fishing and, and you're casting into the wind, you can really make a long cast and kind of force that bait through the wind. But it also has a moderate fast action so that it really enables you to work the bait side to side. You know, too stiff of a rod, you're not going to work the bait properly. This rod has it. And the other thing that's nice about that moderate fast action is when you have a fish hooked and it's, it just slashes at the bait and it's barely hooked, you're not going to lose that fish when it comes at the boat hard. You know, it's, uh, it's a true moderate fast action and, and it has a lot of great uh, things that, that you'd find in a glass rod, but it's, it's a graphite rod. So it's very sensitive, it's very light you know, well balanced. It's uh, the ultimate jerkbait rod. Check them out www.dobbinsrods.com. There's one. <laughs> the jerkbait is like a cat and a mouse with, with smallies. You got to get them to pounce on it. So. If you do the st standard retrieve, a lot of times they'll follow. What I noticed is I'll change it up, I'll speed it up a little bit, less pauses, and then I'll just speed it up, and then halfway when I know I'm in a, in a high percentage area, I'll pause it, and he smashed it. It's a nice chunk. Big one. Oh. <laughs> Boy, that wind makes all the difference in the world. You get around wind, the right type of areas, right type of points or flats, automatic. He ain't quite as big as I thought he was, but that is, that's still a three pound plus fish. <laughs> There's one. Oh yeah. Nice small. Really nice small. And that fish ate that jerk bait. Another nice small on that. I'm a flit 120. A solid three and a half pound fish. There's one. Oh my goodness. Drilled it. Oh yeah, that's a good one. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, what a tank. That fish is probably three and three quarter pounds, and it's in the frame of a three and a half to three and a quarter pounder. Just how fat it is. Wow. <laughs>